Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Avangel, and we are hanging out here at the only default airport we'll be visiting on the entire trip because I couldn't find one for it yet. Annette Island, at the very southern tip of Alaska. And uh, we are flying Baglu's 172 on floats here, which is actually better than the one that was created by Zobo. Um, <laughs> we're taking a trip somewhere special today because. I've had them in for a while, but I've only just had the chance to really get to try them properly. But Return to Misty Warrings is back in Flight of Sim. It is new to FS2020, relatively recently at least. And this is like mega nostalgia from my FSX days. And you'll see why. They are one of the best enhancements you can get for this region of Alaska. Flying up and down the Tongas Fjords and the, the Tongas Sound area really getting to experience some of the coolest seaplane flying you'll find there's cabins there's field airstrips there are so many things uh we are going to get ourselves out of here this is going to take no time at all but i want to really yeah the gps still still broken after this update six what a surprise and i forgot to actually put my fuel in come on there we go start up for me thank you okay controls free and clear Good to go there. Lights are all good. We are good. Let's get our transponder on. So it should be a really long flight today. We're a couple of little hops, but it's a good little adventure. Now, it's over fixed improved water handling, as in water rudder effect. English. The efficacy of water rudders. But they have not really changed the actual water landing and takeoff physics. So we will work on that part of things. And that's the water rudder there. Cool. I'd forgotten if they actually modelled one physically in this aircraft. So our gear is down. We are on the deck. And it is time for us to GTFO. That is released. Here at Anna Island. Now, of course, this being an amphib, it means we've got the opportunity to use both water and normal runways. They're not as great on dirt or gravel because, <laughs> yeah, the, the wheels are, the landing is pretty fragile. It's quite small in most of these planes. But it does work, at least in the uh, not doing backcountry bush flying, you know. Uh, definitely stay on the water for that sort of stuff. So this is definitely appears to be one of those airports that does need some work, but it should be just fine for our purposes. Get ourselves taxied out here. Are we taking off 3 3 here at Annette Island? Heading northbound and getting some nice adventures on the way. We'll pass by, uh, oh god, um, Kachikan, the massive uh, cruise ship base or visiting stop up the coast. So at this very southern tip of the uh, the inside passage, or part of the inside passage, I should say, that's popular for cruise trips. And at traffic, number zero, 403 Sierra X-ray, departing 33, departure to the north. Now this runway actually is this big in real life in terms of the wideness of the side of it. Um, it was built by the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. There we go, get ourselves off the ground, pull that gear up into the wheel wells or into our floats. And yeah, this area could definitely do us some attention. But satellite imagery in Alaska has never always been the best, although I will say it is a damn improvement from what we had previously. So, you know, I can take it. There's, there's only so much you can get with photometry without it getting a little hectic. So we're going to depart on our current heading northbound and head up towards the island just ahead of us you'll see it there which should take us in towards a very special place this this trip is a bit of a pilgrimage of, of a kind we're heading to misty's place this is one of those iconic locations in the return to misty mooring scenery um areas it is the home base of sorts and i spent so many times going in and out of there in my fsx days and sadly less so in p3d i typically flew more in the orbex areas and Orbex didn't actually cover this until the Southern Alaska uh, part came out, but there was a gap where the Tongas Fjord scenery was, and I didn't quite like it as much, so I tended to fly either further north or further south. 
but we are literally flying to that inlet straight ahead of us here. So we'll level the plane out a little bit. And we see the northern tip of the island here. Heading towards the mainland over there. Like I say, it's not wonderful, but this plane actually has something nice. The, the ropes, the, the actual ropes you'd use to not tie the aircraft down, but to help grab hold of the plane and manoeuvre it when it's parked on the water at a jetty. And loops there where they're attached to, where you could actually fasten lines and other things apart from the floats. But they're mostly for grabbing onto and actually manoeuvring the aircraft slash holding onto while she's stood on the float. But the fact they move in the wind is probably the nicest thing about this plane. I love that. And we have the bars, of course, in the window, which I think are newer to this version because this is the latest version he's released. Those bars used to just be, I think, in the ski version of the Asobo one, the one they released. I don't recall these being here in this version of Bagley's one, but he may have updated it since. Which, in which case, if he has, I'm glad, because, yeah, Seaplane said to have this. Oh, hello. Hi, Sim. Do you want to try doing a thing again? There we go. Thank you. How dare you. Microsoft, everybody. <coughs> this happens occasionally. Very rarely, honestly, but it does happen. Wow, this thing cruises. This is, of course, just as upgraded as his uh, tail dragger variant, which is uh, quite powerful. Obviously, I can just idle the throttle back here. We don't need too much of this, but I am slowly descending down towards Misty's. We don't need to be this high up. In fact, we're on a pretty straight heading in. We're going to basically come straight in here at Misty's. I know I should realistically check the landing zone, but I know it's going to be clean because it's flight sim. And... We've got some other places to go today, so I don't want to screw around taking too long with this trip. We have things to visit and see. One day I hope he'll add opening windows or doors to this thing, and if he does, I will literally lose my mind and never fly another plane. Yeah, it's a 172, but right now it's a high wing Cessna on floats that isn't a complete potato in the air. Because for some reason the Sobos took floats on one of the lower powered 172s, rather than the uh, even the SP that the real one has, which is the 160 or 180 horsepower variant. So dead ahead of us right now is Misty's. And this is one of the honestly iconic bases here out in this part of Alaska. It's got a land strip, but it's got the water runway. Uh, so you've got plenty of docks. And more importantly, there's a bar. Now, this is going to sound really old for some of you that back in the day when we all spent time on forums hanging out with each other, rather than just using them to yell at a Sobo. Uh, I was part of a, a bush flying forum where we would routinely create our own little companies we flew for out of the bush and we'd write pirates, pilot reports about our trips. Now, granted, that's not what pirates are typically for, but that's what we called them. And we'd write stories of our adventures and we'd add role play to it and characterization of things. And I had so much fun creating these little fictional stories about the flights I'd taken and why I was going somewhere and why I would head off to a certain location. And it just made it so much more fulfilling than any kind of add-on take cargo XYZ place could ever do. And the return to Misty Mooring sceneries were a huge part of that. It was absolutely intrinsic. And it was just a massive portion of my enjoyment for this kind of flying. Well, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Love it when they get the uh, terrain mapping correct. Nice one, guys. That's uh, that's a little fun. <laughs> uh, some areas are perfect. Some areas they did not seem to care about. Alaska, unfortunately, seems to be one of them. All right, we're coming through a thousand feet right now, so I'm going to descend down the little headland just beyond where we are right now. Right here is going to be our reference point for the water runway here. So as you see us right here, coming up the inlet. Now we'll be heading over there after this to the George Inlet to visit the cannery. Because who doesn't want to visit a cannery, you know? Right, let's pull the power back in here. Let's try and get ourselves decelerated for our approach. Now, I've not been here yet in 2020. It's really come I'm excited. I know it, most of it looks the same as it did in FSX, but seeing it in the new engine and the new sim will be such a joy. These places meant so much to me. 
Yeah, can you get your water masks right, please, Asobo? Because that looks fine. That looks less fine. Okay, so I'm a little slow, a little early here, but we'll kind of maintain ourselves about 18 knots. Those lights there are for the actual runway at Misty's place, which can take land planes. But one of the nice things about a lot of the Return to Misty Mooring sceneries is they added uh, the ground polygons they used uh, actually extended under the water. So you are fully able to, unlike most default scenery locations, actually taxi out of the water and into the water in amphibious planes, making things much more realistic for the actual experience. Like I said, the water handling in terms of water rudders is improved, but it does seem as though general water flight physics are not yet. Maybe one day they'll care enough, but I don't know. Okay. Landing flaps set. Keep our nose up here. We don't want to let the floats tips dig in. That would be bad. A bit of a thudder there. And this porpoising does bug me a little bit with this. Ah, it's not the most realistic experience, but I shouldn't be hopping quite as much. I know there is a condition you can get into that sort of thing, but this is not it. Let's get very small inputs here because we don't want to tip the plane over, which can very much happen. Let's get the flaps up, actually, so we are putting more weight onto the floats. Because creating an easy lift is an easy way to tip the plane over. And if I tip over, I sink. And that's bad. Probably far enough away to have stepped taxi, but I'm just going to keep the tips out of the water here. And let's plow it over to Misty's. Oh, I can see the scenery. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is bringing memories back of approaching here. Off we got. There's one of the... There's the boat. Yeah, that's the little boat at the mouth of the uh, jetty. Or the end of the jetty. The mouth of the uh, smaller part of the inlet. Oh, is that a... <gasps> Look, just under the reinforcement bar on the cockpit. Below where the... Uh, the lighthouse is there. I think that's no way. Because I know in the original Misty Moorings they had the default beaver turned into an actual static plane. It is! Or is that an otter? I can't quite tell. Oh, let's slow down now. We are going definitely fast here. Yes, that's the slope of the back. Oh, it is! It's the FSX beaver. One of my favourite planes from that game. Oh, there she is. Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, let's get ourselves turned around here. And get our gear down. We should be able to taxi out here by the jetty. Oh yeah. Nice. Right, let's get that pulled. That way, so we don't damage it whilst we're getting out of the water. Should have pulled it up a little sooner, but I didn't chance to yet but before the gradient changed too much and the back of the float has got close to the ground get that out of the way because water rudders are very easy to damage oh my yes it's exactly like I remember it oh this is good there's a helipad planes out here oh yes Let's turn that down we got to go for a quick adventure. It is the office of Misty Moorings and Misty's Bar. <laughs> oh, this brings back some serious memories. Do I care? This is not some gorgeous PBR or Bex Airport. Not in the slightest. Look at this thing. This is pure nostalgia. Yeah, sure, it might look like it got pulled straight from FSX, which it did. But I do not care. Not one jot. Sure, the edge map is not as blended as it could be, but I don't care. Look at this. We've got these Sprats dog cakes. Ace Air Charters uh, hangar. And if I'm right, yes, there it is. The big Russian boy in the, the steerman. And, of course, another bar. Because you've got to have another bar, right? You've got to. 
They help, do you? Smokey, please prevent forest fires. Ah, <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, this brings back so many memories for me. So many memories. This is fantastic. I don't, I don't even care that it's not perfect. It's the, the memories, it's the thoughts, it's the opportunity. The fact is, it's better than most of the default places, to be honest. So, I do not care one bit. Right, we're getting on from here, I think. Oh, wow. I want to see one of the other places now. We're going to depart from the land here because we're already on it. So I figure, why not? So we're going to head to the George Inlet Cannery right now, which is just up the coast. And we should pass by another one on the way, but we will just be making a visiting trip there. And there's a little medical shack. Huh. I don't... Yeah. Somehow even the lighting in this sim just makes all of this better. Oh, yes. Right. Rock and roll time. That's a tyre or a rock. Let's not hit that. That would be bad for the plane. And we are clear. Oh, yeah. Climbing out of Misty's place. Ha. <laughs> yeah. This is something. Probably should have taken off on the water because we're an amphibian, but hey, we were, we were close to runway. It made sense, right? <laughs> oh, no. This has brought every happy memory I had from these sceneries back flooding to me. And I'm going to have to fight the urge to continue my round the world adventures flying for you guys because. Oh, uh, this makes me want to come back to Alaska and stay here forever. But. If we got a beaver, you'd have to prize me out of Misty Moorings. Like, if I had a beaver, you'd have to drag me kicking and screaming out of these places. They are the best places in this entire sim. And with a bunch of other bases around here and bush strips, it is really iconic flying. Although, when the porter comes out with the uh, floats, whether it's the Game of the Year edition or the Milvis one, that'll be tempting. That'll be real tempting, because... Uh, that means we're not too far away from the Turbo Otter or Beaver then. Because Milvids have the Turbo Beaver. Turbo Otter, even. That's a big boy on floats. Right. Now, if I'm correct, we head across here for the George Inlet, which is straight ahead of us there. Yep, that'll be it. My memory's coming back to me. It's been a while. Catch a can should be off our side there. George Inlet's dead ahead. So, let's motor along here drop ourselves down actually because I want to stay under Ketchikan's airspace because uh, <laughs> I may not necessarily do all the radio calls when I'm in the sim flying in the bush because I just ah, there's a game at the end of the day oh don't, don't kill me simulator but if I want to go super realistic then I'm, I'm going to do it but if I want to enjoy myself and bring back some nostalgic memories of flying up here eh, it's not worth the effort but Making sure you're not going through an international or regional airport's airspace or go under it where you can is always preferable because uh, dealing with international airports is a pain. Believe me, I uh, fly out of one where I'm just outside the Charlie and it's a pain. You basically take off one direction and you're already in their airspace. It's really irritating, but it is what it is. Uh, anyway, Georgian let's straight ahead, which means Ketchikan's just over there. In fact, you can just make it out now from the window there. That light is the, run the runway at Ketchikan International. And you should probably be able to see a few of the cruise ships, although I don't know if I have my Orbex Ketchikan installed. I remember pulling it out when all the uh, terrain disappeared the first time. Remember when the servers had their first outage? Yeah, and I pulled it all out back then. Because I thought that was the thing that had done it because I'd just installed it. Now, Orbex Catcher Can is also a bit of a uh, nostalgia trip because they released it for real cheap because it was basically their FSX one ported over. Um, which wasn't that fantastic. It was one of their older ones. But hey, it adds something to the area that's better than what it was. So, meh. 
Why not, right? Okay. It's nice enough for us. So yeah, it is dramatically enhanced from what you normally would have in the area, of course. Well, sorry, it's, it's enhanced over FSX, but it's still not the most beautiful area, texture-wise, in the world, because unfortunately, limited data. Yeah, there we are, catch a can up there, the airport over here, and the town over there with the cruise ships all moored up in front of it. Yeah, the, the actual terrain looks fantastic, it's just unfortunately, well, the terrain and the water lines mostly, it's just the uh, the quality of the satellite imagery is not the most phenomenal. I will have to try the Google stuff everyone's playing with at the moment to see how that compares. Maybe if I'm using Google for telemetry, it won't crash every time Bing servers takes a massive poop. But we can hope, right? Stay below 1500 here to stay away from there. Charlie, drop ourselves down here. We shouldn't be too far out around this headland. If this is, in fact, where I remember it to be. Because whilst I have a route plotted, I am not paying attention to it. <laughs> I am flying off memory alone. There's the coastal highway. Last side of Ketchikan there. There used to be a seaplane base just around the coast, just past Ketchikan that I used to spend a lot of time going in and out of. There was a really nice ramp up to a uh, hangar. Okay, let's drop ourselves down here. So yeah, it's not terrible, but it's not great. But that's just the default area, I guess. Could be better. Could be worse. Okay, down we come. Let's see if we can get a good eye on what's down here. Now, I hope the totems are here. I think from the screenshots of the scenery I saw that was a thing, but I really hope they are here. Those were always fun, finding them around the various uh, landing sites out here. So it should be up ahead here. pretty positive it's just a little bit further possibly around the kink ahead I think if my memory serves me correctly which it rarely does that is a common problem for me my memory never serves me correctly it always brings me the wrong drink yeah I'm a comedian I'm here all week I do try now we are in a little bit of a drought of releases recently but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can get in the next coming weeks and months now a lot of developers have realized sim update 6 has really not broken anything um, which is a miracle in its own right and actually pretty good. I'm actually really happy with how this one turned out. They managed to release one that wasn't completely cracked. Impressive. And, well, at least this is what God Gravel mentioned to me, at least. This one seems to have actually been fine. Um, if anything, it's given developers better tools to enhance flight models, so... Um, I say, um, a lot. I do apologise. I record these things live because... I don't like the idea of writing a script over me flying somewhere because it's not really dynamic. Let's drop down a little bit here, get close to the coastline. So we should be coming up against up against the uh, coming up at the bases now. We should have a small one to our left nearly, and the cannery will be beyond that. Oh, here we are! Here we are! Yeah. <laughs> Plane tied up at the jetty. See that just that small difference adds so much to this sim. Just that adds so much to this area. And there's one of the totems. Look there. Look at that. It's a tiny difference, but it makes a huge, huge change. All right, I'm going to pop a stage of flaps down here so we can just slow roll it towards the cannery. Get an aerial view before we come in and land. Should be just around the bend here. There we are. Nice. It's hard to get a little shadowy here, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, just how I remember it. No, I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. This... It adds so much depth to give you more things because seaplane bases are woefully underrepresented in the simulator. And out here there's a lot of them because there isn't a lot of space for runways. 
so it's really nice to have this better represented and hopefully we'll see more people doing more of that kind of thing around the world. Now in terms of future releases I know we're thinking Carinada's got the 337 and probably something else in the works because that's been nearly done for weeks now. We have the Twin Otter, we have the ATR, the 310, we have the Porter update, a new Porter, we have the NX Cub from Asobo which will be interesting to see how it compares to the Bush League Legends one which will honestly probably be better and we have of course got, oh god what else do we have, oh sorry the Kodiak yes. Now the Kodiak's coming too, so there's some really exciting projects coming soon, most of which I actually really want to personally fly a lot, so. Okay, so there's the cannery. We'll head south just to this bend and we'll turn around and put down. So let's get ourselves lowered a little bit here. We're about 500 feet up. Sun's in our eyes, so not the ideal way you want to land. Windsock looked calm, calm, uh, looked calm as we came past. I think I smelled toast. Does anybody else smell toast? No, just me. That's a problem. No, landing into the sun in a seaplane can be very dangerous. You can't see the water surface as well. Everything gets glassier quicker. Okay. Let's bring her around here. There we are. Runways are the length of the actual uh, inlet here, so. Let's bring her in, nice and gentle. Always feels like you just slam into the water in uh, flights in 2020. I don't know why, because it wasn't remotely hard in terms of a landing, and it porpoises very easily as well. I've flown float planes for years in The Sims, and the theory from real life applies, but for some reason 2020 really does not like them. Alright, there we go. We've got positive steering, just a little bit of nudging there. So we'll bring ourselves into the jetty here. We need to make sure we do it kind of slowly because we're trying to make sure we approach and don't slam into it. That's typically bad for aeroplanes. Unfortunately, I can't cut the engine when I'm out and just coast in the last few bits because it doesn't really work. There's, there's a lot of friction, I think, on the water in. And that's the biggest thing, I think. There is a ton of friction in the water in 2020. It's almost like land. It treats it almost like land levels of friction. So the airplane rolls to a stop much, much quicker. And there's one of the other totems there on the shore, just beside the window. So there's a boat here right before the jetty, so we need to be a little bit careful. There's a a barge, it seems, tied up at the other jetty, so let's make sure we're not going too quickly here. In fact, that is probably way too fast already. Let's just turn gently and kill some speed. Not too fast, not too slow. Nice and gentle. Who thought I'd be this excited to visit a cannery, right? Well, I did. One of my favourite places. To, not favourite, but I, I just loved all the sceneries, of course, in Return to Misty Moorings. It's always been so good. Right, cutting power. Letting her drift in. Keeping the wind from windmilling me. This is where I get out and climb on the dock and be able to do that. I wonder if this works. It does nothing, of course. And I've drifted past. Is that a boat ramp? <gasps> Plan changed. Plan very much changed. Oh, it's not a boat ramp, but I'm totally driving up it. Try and stop me. See what I mean about the ground polygons? You just come straight in and out. I hope this photo cliff isn't solid. For its own good. Yes! Oh god. Oh god! 
Let's up we go, up we go, up we go. Uh... Ooh, this is fun. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have driven through that, but it was funny. <laughs> oh. All right, parking brake on. Kill that, kill that. I love how the camera always has to be so edgy. Look at these sceneries, though. Yeah, it's from FSX, but this looks great. Okay, the people do look a little dated, I'll be honest. That's concerning and slightly horrifying. But you've got the cannery itself there. You've got these sheds up on the water where the ships are actually unloaded and things are processed. It looks good. Look at this. Guys loading cargo onto the barge. Good repurposing of the air marshalers. Oh, yeah. No, this is good. This is memories. This is fun. There's another totem over there. I think there's one at the coast slightly as well. And there's a little house just in the woods behind the base. Nice. That is... A serious trip down memory lane. I highly recommend it. If you want to float float planes, visit some of these places. Totally worth it. Oh, I feel all happy and nostalgic now. I'm going to go listen to some 90s music. Bye. <laughs>